Our next guest's online videos brought her stardom virtually overnight during the pandemic. From lip syncing and imitating former President Trump, Sarah Cooper gained attention from some of comedy's greatest, from Jerry Seinfeld to Ben Stiller. Take a listen. And he said there actually is, and he named it, whatever it might be. And it was 30 or 35 questions. The first questions are very easy. The last questions are much more difficult, uh, like a memory question. It's uh, like you'll go person, woman, man, camera. It doesn't lose it. Uh, <laughs> it's still so funny. Now the Jamaican native can add author to her accolades. Sarah's memoir, Foolish Tales of Assimilation, Determination, and Humiliation, dives into her roller coaster journey to Hollywood and everything in between. And Sarah, kind enough to join us now in studio. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's get a, a, just a sense of your journey to the American dream. Jamaican yeah. immigrant, you moved to Maryland, and then what? My parents brought me uh, when I was three. And, um, yeah, I, it was growing up in Maryland was was great, but I immediately assimilated. Mm -hmm. I was correcting my parents' accents. Uh, they would um, they would say, "Oh, she needs a soda." And I, I was like, "Mom, Dad, that's a pacifier. Oh, not a soda, not a soda. <laughs> not a soda. <laughs> and um, so they raised a little Republican <laughs> who loved poison and Bush. My parents, we're very excited about America, the land of opportunity, specifically the opportunity to own land. Mm. So we um, moved house to house to house, and every neighborhood got whiter and whiter and whiter. I didn't even realize that I was black until I was eight years old. And, and you talk about that racial identity and yeah. assimilation and not really thinking about uh, your race. You're right, black women are not a monolith, mm -hmm. but even in the vast spectrum of blackness, I don't know where I am. Sometimes I can't tell if I'm a black woman or a white dude named Craig. Yeah. How has other people's perception of you really informed your thoughts of you? Um. Well, I think because when you come to this country, you want to fit in so badly. Um, I became such a people pleaser that mm. I kind of wanted to be what people wanted wanted me to be. And a lot of times, people think you are what they are. Indian people think that I'm Indian. Ethiopians think I'm Ethiopian. It's it's just a need to connect, a need to relate. But it's also kind of annoying because it's a need to categorize everybody because everybody needs to know where you're coming from, you know, what angle are you coming from, and, you know, like. Even at Google, my manager I me once, and he said, Sarah, I'm doing the diversity report. Is it okay if we say that you're black? Mm. And I said, I am black. Mm. <laughs> and he said, great, even better. You have talked about 2020 being the weakest point in your life. Yeah. Because this is also when you started doing, during the pandemic, your lip syncs of, of Trump videos. Mm -hmm. What? Why the... Um, dissonance there between of what was a very, you know, on yeah. its way up career mm -hmm. and you're feeling like you're at your lowest. Well, when I say lowest, I mean, I didn't know myself. I was in a marriage with someone who wasn't right for me. I was outsourcing all of my decisions and all of my opinions to popular media. Um, can I say basic bitch? Is that I was... I, I was a basic bitch, uh, really. I truly... I'm still struggling with that, actually, because I just said yes to everything and agreed to to all of the opportunities that were coming my way. But I feel in a lot of ways that the person inside me was sort of buried behind all of this people pleasy, you know, um, trying, just trying to fit in um, type personality. I just want to ask, how did you start doing the, the Trump lip syncing videos? Yeah, I mean, I was just jealous of Trump. <laughs> He contradicted himself. He lied. You know, he got away with so much, and everyone around him just nodded and sort of let him get away with it. And um, I sort of recognized that a little bit. I wish I could be a schmoozer and just get away with that. So I wasn't really trying to be Trump. A lot of times people thought it was like an impression, but it was like, what if Sarah Cooper was the guy uh, sitting in the meeting? Sarah Cooper, really appreciate you coming on. Want to let our viewers know her book, Foolish Tales of Assimilation, Determination, and Humiliation, is now available wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.